All right, so welcome to Publishing and Managing Modules with an Internal Repository. You know, I'm your host, Kevin Marquette, and I suppose to set the stage um, for what I'm going to talk about, I want to show a little bit about my environment. Like, uh, Lone Depot, we use quite a bit of PowerShell. Like, it drives our, our whole automation pipeline for everything we do. We've built quite a few modules. Like, we have like 30 some internal modules, like 700 some functions that really drives like every piece of every aspect of our day. And not only do we have lots of modules internally, we're starting to do more with the open source community. Like, we're open sourcing a few modules, and then I've got several of my own personal modules that we're building and pulling internally to work on stuff. And then we've got other just stuff from the community that now we're like putting pull requests out to, but we kind of need to consume it sooner than later as we work through those other processes. And then uh, we also, I also like re-host at least like 18 different, you know, modules from like the PowerShell gallery. And I'll kind of explain what I mean about that a little bit later as I get into that section. And then to round it off, of course, we've also got like, you know, the Azure and the Power CLI. They're pretty heavy hitters. There's lots of numbers behind those. I just want to skew these numbers to kind of show you what my environment looks like. So as I'm talking about how I'm managing modules, you can kind of see where I'm coming from and going with in some of this tooling and, and pieces. So that really brings us back to the question, like, how do you distribute PowerShell? I'm sure one time or another we've all, like, emailed a script to somebody. Uh, hopefully that's not your main mode of sharing scripts. Um, please hope it's not your main mode. Uh, you know, then I see teams, like, you know, small team, like, they're doing workstation setup, they'll have a USB drive and get this file this USB key we're sharing around to manage our scripts. And, but hopefully you step beyond that and are at least putting them someplace centrally, like a file share. And that's, like, that's the, the way that these teams kind of grow. And before you know it, and hopefully, you know, most of you are either already using source control or at least thinking about it. And that becomes like a good next step of how do I share stuff amongst my team and you, know, you always pull the latest. But then the question is like, well, how do I get my code onto the servers? Like, do I have Git pulling it there? And you kind of run, the, run into all these situations that all of our personal modules, from like from the gallery, it's just so nice that we can just like do install module. You know, it's like in a way, what if we just have our own, you know, uh, our own PowerShell gallery? You know, a way we could just do in, find module and we list all the stuff that our teams work on, or we do our install module and it's loaded locally. Because, um, like, if you're using stuff off of a share and you're importing modules off of a share, you're probably seeing load times are a little bit slower than they should be. Uh, God forbid you've actually made your PS module path point to a share. You really feel the pain then. Um, <clears throat> and then we're locally installed, we get auto loading, and all the fun stuff of, as if we were using a PowerShell gallery. So that's really what we're going to you know, kind of throw together the day is repository to do all this fun stuff. So I'm going to kind of jump into some code here, and we're going to walk through the basics of like just creating a basic repository and you know, doing some publishing to it. Um, I'll do the same thing like using a NuGet feed, and then I'll kind of walk through some nuances that I've had to deal with in my own publishing scripts. They, they start out so simple at first, but as you run into issues, you add these gotchas and catches, and they get more mature over time. I want to share with you guys some of the stuff that I've kind of had to bake into my publishing process. And I'll talk about why I take public modules and bring them inside. So with that, let's pull up some code here. And uh, da -da -da -da. get our windows just right. <clears throat> I guess everything starts with uh, PowerShell get. Right, this, is, this is the command that has all of the, the functions and features that we're going to be working with here. So let's go ahead and get that loaded. And the commands we're really going to look at are the uh, PS repository commands. And, and it actually really surprised me when I very first started putting together my own repository at how simple it is. You know, the commands around this are just, you know, Get repository and register repository and just a couple others to you know help with the management. So got those commands. You know, and I've my default repository that I have loaded right now is the uh, PowerShell gallery. 
And our first one, the most basic one, I'm just going to point at a file share. So if nothing else, you at least have a folder you could point to. You know, for my demo, I'm just going to use a local folder, but it should be the same as a UNC path. Um, and while I kind of set the stage for that here, the one detail about using a UNC path is it's going to use your uh, your uh, your NTFS permissions as the security for accessing and, and, and publishing to that location. All right, so I actually have this variable here. I'm, just, I'm calling it a network share for the sake of uh, the demo. And it's just a local folder of this repo. And we're just going to tell PowerShell that that folder is a repository. So the options are pretty simple here. You know, it's my repository is the name of it in this case. The publish, uh, the source location and the publish location uh, are going to be the same. Um, we're not doing any fancy here, so we're going to publish to one spot, and we'll basically install from the exact same spot. And we're going to mark this guy as trusted because you know, if we don't trust our code, who will? <laughs> and let's register this one. And then let's make sure it actually registered properly. And now I can see on the uh, source location you know, the exact path that we defined. So everything's going exactly as we expect here. And if we do a find module on this repository, now we have nothing in there yet, but if we run this anyways, you know, we can see in the verbose logs that, yep, it's the file share we're looking for, the package yield is zero for absolutely nothing. But from here, we All right, so now, sorry, my mouse jumped on me there for a second. So let's publish a module. So I've actually got a dummy module right in the root of this project. You know, it's, it's basically what it comes. It's got a PSE1, a PSM1 with the function that we're going to export. And in this case, we're just going to call publish module. And as long as I tell it the repository that's my repository, you know, it will publish to that location. Uh, because I'm doing it to a UNC path or a file share, I don't need an API key. Right, if I'm going to do some examples later that will require an API key, but this one, as simple as it is, um, doesn't actually uh, require one. And just like that, we've got a published module, which now when we do our search, we see exactly one item in, in our repository, and it's the one we just published. Uh, the version and everything else is, is expected here. And then, and then we can install from our, 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 mod, our repository, just like we would from the gallery, except that we actually have to specify the repository here. And I, I guess I should say, is, is everybody familiar with splatting at this point? If you haven't, I mean, that's, I'm using this heavily throughout the entire demo. And so I'm mapping these parameters that, that way. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I always scope to my current user when I install modules to not have to deal with admin rights. So let's. Install our module from our gallery. And now when I do the uh, get modules available, you know, my local system now has this module available to me. And, it's, and if I run the command, it's auto going to load it just like I, like, like I expect a proper module to do. So I kind of got in the full circle of a very quick repository, I publish something, and I consume something. And the basics are actually as, as straightforward as it looks here. Sure. Uh, so So, um, kind of, uh, there's a special way you could place it there. Uh, if you just drop the module in there by itself, it's not going to work. It actually has a special package format. In fact, as I uh, enumerate the files, it's actually a NuGet package. So if you had some other way to actually create your NuGet package, and drop it in there with all of the parameters and fields that the PowerShell get wants. Um, uh, you could do that, but I don't think you want to go down that exercise. Um, the publish, though, makes that super simple and easy to, to drop it there. Um, but that does mean, though, like uh, since we're using a file share for this first example, 
that as you publish over and over, you'll get a package for every version that you publish to it. So this will grow over time if you don't clean up and prune old packages and, and kind of do a little maintenance there. Um, those are files. So then we start getting a little bit fun when we want to deploy something that has a dependency. Right? So uh, here's, a, here's a module, this module two. Same story as the last one. But in this case, we have a required modules of some other small module that's, that's on my environment here. And when I go to publish this one, he's not going to be near as happy uh, because he does not exist. Uh, it says it cannot resolve the module dependency uh, of the module in this repository. So what that's really telling me is anything that I publish to my repository that has dependencies, I also need those dependencies in my repository first. So that's something to take in mind if you're taking like a dependency on a public module in the gallery that this, pub this is actually checking the gallery you're publishing to to make sure the dependencies are there. So there's two ways to work around that. I mean, one of them is publish your module to that gallery as well. Uh, but the other uh, way, which you can actually add a field to the uh, manifest of your, of your PSD1. Let me pull this guy up here. And I've already staged him in here. I just got to comment him out. And it's this external module dependencies. So it's basically telling uh, PowerShell Git that, yes, I require this module, but this property here tells me that it's an external dependency so that I'm not going to require it to be in the gallery, which means that when I install it from the gallery, it's not going to auto-install it, but it just knows that you're going to manage that some other way. Um, that might be good for some built-in ones like, say, like the Active Directory module. Like that's not one you're going to publish your internal gallery. You're going to install that through you know, the admin tools or however you tend to install that module. So uh, using this external module dependencies for, allows you to not have to have that module published. Um, all right, so sure. Uh, the question is, is there like external assemblies that you could uh, uh, attach in this as well? And you know, I'm not familiar. I haven't, dove, I haven't dove into the scenarios of publishing something that requires assemblies. I've always had my stuff packaged together. Um, I'll have to taste that one down. Actually, since it doesn't support the part of on publish, I don't see why it's a problem. Okay. So as long as you have it on your system where you're installing them, like it's. So you got to manage your dependencies somehow. Uh, and the comment was, PS depends is one way to resolve your dependencies like that. OK, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jump to a little video here, because I don't necessarily trust the uh, gallery or Wi-Fi. So I, the first bug you're going to run into, I guess that's, that's what i got to call it, call it here, is that when, when you run find module, now, since I have a second repository on my system, it's going to, oh, I didn't publish that one. I got to run the video. So, so when you have a second, second repository, now the PowerShell get commandlets are going to actually check both, both uh, galleries for the uh, modules. So when I run find module in this case, it's going to see both my repository and the gallery having it if I published it there. So when you try to install the module, you now need to also specify the repository you want to install from. Because if it finds it in both locations, it's going to pretty much tell you, hey, I found two of these. I don't know which one to install. So that's one of the first bugs you run into is like if you have scripts that are now, that have already been out there that don't care about what repository they're pulling from because they're always going from the gallery, and you've added a second gallery now, you may have to go be a little bit more specific on these. Um, so this, this final example, you know, we specified the repository and everything loaded is, is expected here. Uh, based off of, but another option is you could set some default parameter values. So the repository is specifying my repository as a preference for your internal stuff. 
and then somebody has to specify the external one to pull external stuff. There's ways we can leverage um, PowerShell to help us out there. So I'm going to charge ahead here and do the same thing with the NuGet feed. Right? Um, I, so I'm going to actually load an API key uh, in this case. Um, I've already pre-generated. This is a throwaway key, so it doesn't matter if anybody sees it. And you can use lots of different NuGet feeds uh, for this example. I'm going to fire up a Docker container, because um, I can just grab one from the gallery, load it, and publish to it. Um, my environment, I'm using ProGit. I uh, heard somebody say, like, Nexus has a package. Many of them it seems to be easy to work with. Um, so let me get this stuff fired up here. Uh, you, we saw in the demo earlier this week um, some tooling around making it easier to work with the uh, uh, Azure artifacts as a source for your PowerShell modules. Um, there's a lot of gotchas to jump through, so I didn't want to uh, uh, dive into, into it in this talk. But they feel, I feel like they've uh, addressed a lot of those. All right, so I verify my containers up. I'm getting a good status code from the endpoint. And when we register the repository, it's actually more of the same. Um, my location is now the URI of my NuGet server. And so we create a second repository, just as quick as we created the first one. And I ask for it, and I get it back. And I can see the local host is my source location. And we run the verbosity of it, we can see that you know, we get uh, our local host endpoints and zero packages, again, because, like I said, I have no, uh, nothing published. And then when I actually go to publish this time, I actually have to specify an API key. I think if I don't, going off script here for just one run here, it should throw back an error, effectively telling me that um, you know, the API key is required. So let's actually get this module out there. In this case, I'm just, I'm just installing a module that's just in, uh, available in my local system. So this is like a republish scenario. And now we can find it just like we could uh, the other modules. Um, I think the general preference is to use NuGet feeds over file shares, because it's like a direct index and look up. You'll get better performance hitting a NuGet feed versus as your file share grows, it's going to have to enumerate all of those NuGet packages and, and look through them. So your performance will degrade over time very fast if you're using a file server compared to a NuGet feed. Uh, if you're doing the DevOps stuff, um, you're going to have uh, uh, teams that are probably looking at NuGet feeds anyways. And then we can find our modules and install them uh, just like we did from the local repository, or the uh, file share repository. OK, so that's, that's as simple as it can be. Like, when things go smooth, it goes really smooth. Um, so I'm going to walk through some of the, uh, the, the tooling I, I, I've worked through to, like, for my publishing scripts. You know, the very first, uh, don't mind this here. I'm basically going to bump the module version of this module real quick using the build helper tools just so that I'm not conflicting versions on my future publishes. So my most basic script, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty much you know, module path, repository, you know, nice verbose output for the logs. Uh, since I'm running like TFS, my, 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 uh, my CI CD pipeline does good logging. And then uh, publishing. I tend to always publish with verbose true so that when stuff doesn't go as planned, I got enough logs to go back and see you know, what what really the issue was. And force, I think there was an old bug that I might not need to force it anymore, but old habits die hard. And there we go, we're published. So, all right, so it starts to go sideways. Here's the things I start poking at a little bit in the process. Uh, the first one is uh, using test module manifest. So let me set my variables here real quick. And I run test module man manifest in my own scripts because I've learned that the power to publish is going to run it anyways. So I may as well catch it and get my, my logging to know it's a validation error versus trying to parse through you know, the PowerShell gets attempt to publish it. So I'm like, all right, if they're going to do it anyways, let me run it ahead of time to make sure my, my, my module is valid enough to even be published. So 
Just adding the line to test the module manifest never uh, hurt anybody. Then verify you can import the module. Um, I found, I've started actually removing the module from my session and importing it just to know I've got a nice clean import uh, for all the actions to follow. I've had this really weird case I've chased down a couple times, especially with uh, a certain binary command that I had or module that I found that it was a, my process imported it for something else and I tried to publish the new version of that in the same pipeline, the old one being loaded was like in my way. And I uh, had to do some magic to work around that. All right, so yeah, import the modules just to make sure that, the, that they load properly. Because if you can't import it, PowerShell get won't publish it. So that's, if I'm having publishing issues, the first thing I want to know is, is it even a valid module? Did my build do something weird? Um, something to hunt for. All right, so let's bump our module version again. And then publishing, you actually have to specify the directory path to the module and not the PSD one directly. A weird nuance, like if I actually try to publish this file here, this, uh, this PSD one, it's actually gonna tell me, very, I mean, it does a good job of telling me this, but the error message is effectively, uh, this file is not a valid directory. I know it's not a valid directory. <laughs> uh, Thanks for telling me that. <laughs> so, and of course, yeah, specify the, specify the directory of the, of the module you want published. Uh, and then verify your module actually published. So I think it's fixed now in newer versions of NuGet, or uh, uh, PowerShell Get. Uh, don't quote me on that one. But I've had many cases in the past where it happily said, I've published your repository just fine, everything's okay and it wasn't actually out there. So as a defense, I now ask, once I've published, hey, um, is my module actually out there? I'm gonna do a little hack here to get the version number. I don't know if you know this, but the PSD one's actually a hash table if you uh, load it and do an invoke expression on it. So I can see in my manifest uh, the version, we're at what, uh, 1.4 here. And then, yeah, we just say, hey, do I find it? Oh. Actually, did I skip a publish somewhere? I must have. Oh, okay, I didn't load my hash table, there we go. So, it, I found it, no issues, you know, I, I carry, on, carry on with life. Uh, the one thing I found that actually caused me to not publish more modules than anything is not having a valid NuGet API key. So in a lot of my, my pipeline scripts, where I'm doing a lot of my automation to publish things, uh, you, the, there's a pattern of you putting your secrets in environment variables to map in to commands to pull them. And if I don't do that properly, the command doesn't actually have a value to apply, and it, it's null. So making sure my values actually have values in them before I use them is a, just a good practice all around. And that's one of those where older versions of PowerShell get would happily pretend to have published your module and then you not having an API key, it didn't actually publish it, and then I'd find that, yeah, that's my, that my root cause all along. Uh, okay, so then from there, I do this thing where I host public modules internally. Like that's my way of getting around the dependency issue of my modules I'm building, is that I'm taking a dependency on something, I build a pipe, or I actually take that module and I publish to my internal repository to make sure I have it. And the other thing that that, by, that that affords me is that internally, we can actually just say, basically update module latest all the time to all, everything that's on my internal feed because I'm actually getting, controlling which versions of modules get into the internal feed. Like that's just a way to make sure that uh, everybody's on the same versions and I'm not leaking new stuff too fast into the various environments. Um, I don't have air gap networks where I wouldn't have access. I wouldn't have access to the gallery, but environments where that might be the case, um, you might actually have to put everything into one repo first and then pull it back down. So the scripts and pieces that I have that run through that. Um, so I'm actually gonna run this little video here. 
All right, so let me kind of prep my environment here a little bit. And I kind of just use a JSON file that enumerate, has a list of all the modules that I want installed. So this is something that I run this when I want to update all of my internal modules. So whenever I take a dependency, I basically add the modules to like a JSON file or in any list, really. Um, for the demo, I've got Pester, the script analyzer, and Plaster as the three modules that I'm going to download and then rehost on my internal feed. So I load my, my, my settings file, and I pretty much literally just walk that modules list, and I save the module to like a local folder. So I'm calling save module for every module in the list. That way I've got my local copy that's either tied to the versions or not that I have specified. And this will also um, download and save any dependencies that those modules have. Um, but then for publishing, you actually need to specify each one individually. Uh, then I always import all the modules because I don't want to republish something if I know I can't import it in my environment um, to verify I do have the dependencies that I need. And then I'm in Glazer over this, but I actually run tests for all of my modules as well. So I'll actually pull my modules down, run my tests for my code, and if that fails, I stop right there. If it passes, I go into the next step where I actually publish the modules. And it's, again, it's just another walk of that same list. I enumerate the list of modules. I go through the folder of everything I've downloaded, and I publish them to this gallery that I've defined. And when it's all said and done, I've now just mirrored all those modules that I really care about to my internal feed that I can consume as a dependency of another module or, or could care about for the, the various environments that we're looking at here. And as this wraps up here, we do a find module, and we literally have everything available to us to, uh, to use. And this gives you the option to, oh, actually, I, I, and I can pin versions with this as well. Like if you actually use the same scaffolding I have here, you notice I have version 4.3 of Pester, because I defined that in my required versions um, in my JSON here. And if I were to do an actual find module into the gallery, um, there's a much newer version available that I haven't decided to consume yet and bring into my environment. And, uh, and, and, and there's some modules that it's always a good idea, idea to have better vetting and testing on them and control when they come in versus I can probably take the most recent about once a month or every, every few weeks and feel pretty comfortable about it. And here I have 473 as an option, and I haven't decided to take that yet, but I basically have a pipeline to control the flow of modules into my environment. Um, all right, so test everything, publish everything. Okay, so then we've got this beautiful gallery up and going. Uh, there's some nuances on bootstrapping too to be aware of. So the PowerShell get commands, I've been Mentioned this a lot, but in the beginning there was you know, version 1.0.0.1 of this module. And on many versions of Windows, it had the same version, but the code bits were different. So my biggest message to all of you is update that as soon as possible. PowerShell Get, if you're going to be doing something on your box in your environment with PowerShell Get and package management, update those before you start using them. So my bootstrap, that's effectively what I do. You know, I specify my, uh, my endpoints. Uh, my repository, and I bootstrap script. I say, hey, I want this system to use my repository and have all the dependencies I need. You know, I do the walk where I say, hey, do you have the repository already? You know, if not, let's go through and, and set it up. Ignore that I'm using a start job here at the moment. I'm going to come back to why I'm doing that. But uh, like, there's a package provider that you have to load on the system. You know, may as well get that out of the way, out, out of the gate. It's a NuGet provider, then I register my repository, and then I actually install, actually I check the version of PowerShell Get, and if it's older than the version I want, um, I install both package management and PowerShell Get from my repository, because I'm controlling which version I want. At the moment, it's the latest. I can't guarantee the gallery I have access to it in the system, so um, I pull in the version I want from my gallery, and then the whole reason why I did these in a job is because that once you load package management and then I go to update it, I can't use the updated version in my session. 
So I kind of do this hack where I like, let me start a job, go update Power, PowerShell management, package management, PowerShell get, come back to my session and continue off the rest of my logic because then, because I haven't loaded it yet, I can then load it cleanly and continue on. Maybe I need to flip that and just load those things and do my extra logic in a job to get the latest modules, but yeah, because package management's binary, there's some nuances there of loading and reloading the versions. Um, I do want to mention that the package provider, if you don't have access to the internet, um, you will have to do like an offline install. Like one option is to copy these binaries from one system that you've already bootstrapped to a system that's off network, um, however you want to sneaker net those files over there. But once you get the files in place, you can import the package provider, and then you're kind of up and going to be able to use um, the PowerShell get commandlets. Um, so then I want, so then I also have, so I got the process where I bootstrap a system, like okay, now that I know that they can pull from my repository, um, I also drop on a module that's just there for updating all the modules that, that we manage. So I'm gonna call this like update my module, or, or internally I call it update LD module for Lone Depot. So when we run that, not only do I update the stuff that I care about the most from my internal feed, I'll actually discover things that I actually want installed in those boxes, so that same command, as a way to like, do my own maintenance of what should be on that box through one command. Um, as, and it's just a wrapper around the install module stuff. But, uh, yeah, so my bootstrap, the first thing it really does is loads my module manager onto the system. That way we can actually just call that to put all the other modules I care about as like an ongoing process. You know, like um, people will either put that command in their profile or every so often just say, you know, run the update command to pull the latest that you need. And I know I'm controlling what they're pulling down because they're using my command to do it. Uh, when I run this command in my environment, um, I do pay special attention to actually be very verbose about what versions are already there versus the versions you're installing. Because when you need to troubleshoot something later on, like what happened, knowing what was there and what's, what you've loaded um, is, is very valuable. And then using a tool to you know, save those logs someplace, and you know, I like the PowerShell framework's got a good logging module that, that lets you, the PS framework, to log this stuff. It'd be a great place to record information like this. Um, All right, so other tips here, because, like, all right, so what do I install with my update module, right? Like, uh, the easy way is since I actually have an internal repository, is literally to say, like, find everything from my repository and install that at the latest version. You know, since I have a different process to control what versions go into the internal repository, I can have my systems uh, just be tightly coupled to the versions that I put there. So always pull the latest from what I'm managing there. Optionally, um, I've also used like a manifest pattern for some modules to say, you know what, these modules are ones that we're gonna actually pull from the gallery, but I'm gonna control what versions and when, and when we pull these. Uh, so some of these, like here's, here's, here's one where I say, you know what, this depends on, I'm gonna pull from the PS gallery, but this JIRA one, I'm gonna pull from my repository. So I wanna be more, explicit about what I'm running with the update. Um, you know, I tend to build this little manifest to say, here's, here's the rules for what we, want, what we want to install. I do uh, put my versions so that breaking changes don't get automatically pulled in, so I kind of pull a range of versions. Um, but that's just a nuance of, of my implementation. And then, you know, from there, it's literally just, you walk all, walk all the modules, check the versions, if, uh, the version that I want to install isn't already on the box, and we call install module with all the options, right? Allow clobber, skip the publisher check, force it, and just install my module. And so it's all baked into the script for me already, and we, we make sure that module gets installed. Uh, yes. Uh, if you want to do cleanup of your old modules, I, you could probably drop that in here. It says, hey, uninstall everything that doesn't match the versions I just loaded. Um, I kind of go back and forth when I want that and when I don't. So I'll let that one as an exercise up to the reader. Uh, 
And then I also need to mention that not all versions are the same. So uh, uh, ProGet decided to normalize versions at some points. So some modules will be published with an old version of, of uh, NuGet. And when I go to rehost these, so if I run, I don't have it here, where, there it is. So if I query like my internal repository and the PowerShell gallery for certain modules, like this one, this, this DSE one, SQL Server DSE, they use um, a four part version number, but uh, the last digit is a zero. And then when I went to republish it to my internal gallery, it actually dropped that zero off because it's actually getting repackaged. And the newer version of NuGet says, you know what, this is the same thing. I'm just going to use this, this, this clean version in the repository. Um, newer versions of PowerShell Get do properly install that on the system. Older versions don't, so make sure you update PowerShell Get. Uh, but if you're doing your own version comparison logic, you got to be you have to account for this, and uh, I, I take that back. You could also just load a really old version of NuGet and put it in your path, like version two point eight something or other, and, and it will actually publish with the old versions. Um, but eventually, you'll want that updated. So uh, just knowing that all versions are not created equal, and before it bites you. You know, when we see that these don't equal each other because they are two different versions, and we look at the object structure of a version, like they're actually using like a negative one the revision when they don't want to specify it. Long story short, you know, if they are the same in your validation logic, you say, yep, these definitely match. But if not, you just gotta walk all the properties and compare them just to make sure the things you care about are the same and if their versions are um, in the case where they're less than or equal to zero. The oddity is that if I actually had like a point 0.1 here on that version, let's say here, point 0.1, uh, 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 NuGet would actually just leave the point 0.1 there. And it's just the fact that there's a trailing zero, and there's enough modules out there with the trailing zero that I've had to deal with this on my internal publish. And, ooh, and also watch your version types because the get module command and the find module command have two different data types. So where one is a version number, the other one is a string. If I go to run this logic up here using a string, uh, that's, that's just not going to work for me. So I was very careful to actually cast this as a version number here to make sure I'm doing version comparison logic and not string to version comparison logic. Um, yeah. Uh, da, 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 version types. Ooh. And then I, ca I have to make a special call out to the AZ module in this talk um, because if you do decide to rehost the AZ module from the public gallery to your internal gallery, um, they actually packaged it in a very custom way that the republish um, doesn't create the same package as the, as, as, as as they built. So if you even if you were to publish all the AZ modules to your internal feed and you install the AZ module, if you do it from the gallery, it's going to load everything, all the dependencies come down with it. But if you're hosting your internal one, it's just going to load that one module because they're doing NuGet package management for the dependency logic and not traditional PowerShell manifest requirements to get it to download on install. So long story short, um, don't even try hosting the AZ module internally because it's just not going to work. <laughs> and the second thing I got to call out with it, that if you're doing your own version comparison logic, hey, let me do the get my local module and compare it to what's installed. Um, I ran into this fun uh, little, little, little clip of here that, like, normally when you do get module and list available, you expect to get the module back and you get the version number. You know, and on PowerShell 6.2, it does that exactly like you'd expect it to do. If I go to PowerShell 5.1, and I get older versions of, 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 of like 6.1, and I do get module list available for the AZ module, uh, I can't find it. It just doesn't exist as far as get module is concerned. 
But if you actually enumerate the file system, that thing's sitting there. And it's a bug in that because they named it AZ, which happens to be like a country code. <laughs> <laughs> PowerShell's like, I don't need to load country code type you know, localization files when I'm doing module imports. So we're not going to see that fixed in 5.1. There's just some of the weird nuances with Power, the AZ module that basically made me write a special line of code in my update module command that says, I'm gonna handle the AZ module in a very custom, special way to load it from the public gallery whenever I need the version updated. So I am, and I am literally walking the file system, right, PS module path to find that module, to get the version, to go check the gallery, to know if I need to update or not. I wouldn't mind doing a force install every time, except that's a lot of modules, and it's really slow installing the AZ module every single time, so I actually kind of got to care about it. All right, so that's like end to end, all the pieces that I've put in place to manage and deal with my modules. And I suppose we could probably open up to questions at this point. All right, thank you. <clears throat> <clears throat>